Welcome guys, welcome to another episode of Success Diet, a show that seeks to educate, motivate and inspire. Now we have on set Kevin Brown, he's a graphic designer, he studied international relations at the University of the West Indies. Now without further ado, let's get into the interview. St. John's Road in Ebonyville, the housing scheme in Ebonyville. So, growing up, it was I, I was very close to my parents, my grandparents. Um, but those are my father's parents, and they lived not very far from us. So the majority of my childhood, I really remember like going there and just playing with my cousin and my little brother, and we play with the neighbors and we just chill. I don't know if you know any of any. Cartoon, yeah. I hear you watch Eddie and Eddie, and they're always in the color of them, always at the something's almost like school never keep. Yeah, it's something similar. That's how I recall my younger days. Like, from I remember, I was at grandpa's house, you know, picking almond. Or, um, my uncle had a carpenter, sh carpenter shop mm -hmm. right beside the house, and we'd go over there sometimes and ask the guys to make us like some stick sword and stuff, mm -hmm. and they would make some really nice ones. I was playing and you know without killing each other, so it was it was pretty good. Um, growing up, it was it was enjoyable. All right. So Kevin, yeah. international relations is totally different from graphic design. Mm -hmm. So why did you choose graphic design? All right. So um, that's that's very interesting. A lot of people ask me all the time. Mm -hmm. Is I've always liked the arts. I did art at high school, um, straight up from first form, straight to fifth form, I did CXC art as well. Mm -hmm. So it's always been a part of me, just generally a very artistic design, I love it. Okay. Um, doing international relations, I also had a dream of being a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And I did international law school as well. And I guess at one point I was like, I want to do this anymore. So <laughs> I, I did complete my bachelor's and I read for my degree, got it and stuff, but um, in the job market for, for IR, it's not that it's difficult to get a job necessarily, but it's not that common, that field is not very common, so sometimes it's very competitive for a job market like that. But generally, I, I like art. Um, my intention really was to finish university and then further my story my further my studies mm -hmm. abroad in industrial design or car design um, I like car design because I've always loved cars yeah loved it loved it loved it and uh, I did just to give that in the background my yeah. first interaction with graphic design was in when, when I was in fifth form during the summer holidays mm -hmm. um, I didn't go anywhere, meaning you know a lot of people might have gone abroad or gone out or whatever. I did not do any of that. I, my mom sent me to do, uh, I think it was probably like a four week or a three week course at the end of Monday, and that was the first time I got introduced to Photoshop and Illustrator. And from then, that was history. Every weekend, I'm on Photoshop doing some foolishness. I never really liked Illustrator because I don't know for. The, it never really, it never tech tweets out something. Mm -hmm. But Photoshop was my sweetheart. Did everything in there all the time, do all the other functions, and I just got better and better and better at it. And you know, it became a thing now where people ask me to design this and ask me to design that. So, you know, it, 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 it started that little drive there. Mm -hmm. So it evolved into 
more than, than just graphic design at one point, um, which led me to the car design. I really like cars, so just knowing how everything fits together, like the engineering, how the cars look, all that. So I actually got into a school in Italy, Turin, um, European Institute of Design. However, it was very expensive and I genuinely couldn't afford it because I already did a degree, you know, my parents paid for your school fee already, like we asked them to go and pay for another school fee, yeah. again, for another three-year course. Mm -hmm. That and the, 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 the school fee at that time was ridiculous and with inflation and everything you can only imagine what it's like now. So I deferred and unfortunately I lost my spot because I still couldn't um, afford it. But over time I decided to you know just work in Jamaica and work in a field where I can get into design and graphic design. And my first job was at Creative Media and Events. Yeah. Um, you might know part of it as Wealth Magazine. Mm -hmm. So that's where I kind of really started to flourish corporately because I already had experience in graphic design before mm -hmm. but I started to go out and do corporate work and see what corporate Jamaica is like. I know that recently you decided to start your own business, yeah. right? And I know there might be a lot of viewers who are self-employed right now and they probably want to start their own business, right? So tell me, how did you make that transition from being employed to no, being self-employed. Well, um, I can tell you it wasn't overnight, mm -hmm. nor was it easy. Mm -hmm. um, but I do, I, I can tell you that it's it's long overdue. Um, a lot of persons will see me at some point, like you know, start your own business here. Mm -hmm. um, the transition period, you know, what I did a lot of was really, um, I won't say planning, but learning. You have to do a lot of learning, you know, going into business is not something that you just say, oh, I'm going to go into business and I'm, business and I'm going to be an entrepreneur and hey, everything in life is good. You know, there's this, this romanticism about entrepreneurship that when you are a business owner, you're, you're, you're rich, you're living life and stuff and that is not the case, um, especially in light of the fact that, you know, there's a lot more pressure on you. Just generally, overall, to keep the business alive. So, for me, I did a lot of learning, reading, figuring things out, and then having to figure out what kind of business I'm going to do. Because from I, I moved from creative media then to e media, and you know, it. At one point, I was like, you know, yeah, I, I understand this corporate thing now. I understand the agencies and how they work. I want to do my own thing. But I still didn't know exactly what it was and how it would manifest itself. So I just continued learning, learning what I need to know about corporate Jamaica, learning what I need to know about agency life, how yeah. agencies structure their business, mm -hmm. and what it is that is needed just generally from not only a design perspective, mm -hmm. but from a business perspective. Yeah. You know, what, mm -hmm. what do I need to do when I go into business? You know, yeah. you know the, the nitty gritty. So it was a very tedious, well, I won't say tedious, but it, was, it wasn't something I did on a whim. Yeah. You know, um, I thought about it for years, years I did. Um, if, if I were to, to count, maybe um, after 2011, which is when Roughly when I started working at Creative Media and Events, my first actual job, yeah. it probably took me, I started, basically, I started my own business earlier this year. Well, let me rephrase. I started my business last year, but I didn't go into it full time until yeah. this, year. this year. So, yeah, the, the, the transitional period, you know, it's, it's something that you need to think about. So, within that space, it, it's probably took me roughly nine years, it was 2020. Yeah. It took me nine years to say, to, to actually go into this full time. All right, Kevin, so I know when starting up your own business, it usually comes with a lot of financial and mental strains, especially the financial strain, right? So what I want to know is how you made that transition from leaving something that is secure, like having a steady income, mm -hmm. to doing something that is not so steady. Well, let me not say not so steady, but it's not guaranteed that you'll have a set income coming in. How did you deal with that? All right, well, 
first of all, um, this is the planning part, and yeah. this is also where you not a lot of people will will, be, will like it, but mm-hmm. when you do start your own business, it's not necessarily recommended that you jump ship same time. Yeah. Um, for me, based on how my business was structured, mm-hmm. I secured a contract with a client, yeah. and at that point, just to make, make it be clear that I was working at a digital agency, yeah. but the client that I secured had no ties to that agency. Mm-hmm. Plus, the business that I was doing is different. Mm-hmm. So, just to ensure that you know persons don't get the wrong idea. So, and that's something I would say: don't poach your 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 employees' clients, right? Yeah. Um. Anyway, <laughs> so. I secured a contract Mm -hmm. before and the contract basically paid me more than what I was earning. Mm -hmm. So I made a decision that, you know, all right, after three months, Mm -hmm. what I'm going to do, or at least three to six months, Mm -hmm. I'm going to do both Mm -hmm. and then stock up. So I keep what I earn from my business and keep yeah. what I do at my 9 to 5 so that when I do leave, I have enough of a cushion between, you know, if anything should go wrong or whatever. So, but in the process of that, I was looking to get more contracts. Yeah. So for me, I decided I would need three contracts to be fully secure. Yeah. However, at the, with COVID and everything, a lot of things have changed up a bit. A lot of the work that needed to be done for my 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 client that I did for my business, it was being broken down with what I was doing nine to five. Meaning it was clashing, so I wasn't giving them my full attention and giving others full attention. So I decided to say, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make a switch into this full time. But I had to ensure that you know financially I was secure. For, for a specific period. Yeah. So now I have my clients and I am getting more clients. And I do also have another business. But that business is with, I have partners with that business. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's something that you have to think about, have a roadmap for. Mm-hmm. You can't just jump into it. Um, there are others who have testimonies where, oh, I just started to make a bag of money one time and pressure lick you so all right it's best i leave yeah. you know everybody's journey is going to be different and not everybody will have the same experience so i won't necessarily say oh but when you get a client or if you have your own business don't jump ship i would say don't jump ship if you don't have to for me i had to because it was either here or there yeah. so if if i didn't do it there i would lose that contract but that's what i wanted for myself full time generally for the for, for my life going forward so I decided to choose that yeah. right so I ended up leaving a little earlier than I intended so for another person that journey might not be so easy there there is a a lady um trying to remember her name Greta Greta I think her name is an um uh, an Australian entrepreneur yeah. she did she has a business an online business and her story of how she moved from her nine to five into a full time was just extraordinary. You know, she did a thing online and set it up in such a way where like pre-orders coming in, and by the time she started to put out the product for pre-orders, they were completely sold out. Yeah. And her, she was making like over a million dollars, and this is U.S. dollars in one night. One night. And by the time her products refresh, come again for pre-orders, sold out again. Yeah. So she was making a lot of money, right? And she's still at her 95. And her 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 friends and family were saying, no, oh, don't leave the job, don't leave the job. Blah, blah, blah. And like, she, she was like, Ugh. So Greta Van Riel, she, started her own business and overnight she became a millionaire and her family was telling her no I quit your job and so on and so forth and she apparently secretly quit her job but she didn't tell anybody mm-hmm. but you know she's making this amount of money she actually went to work 
Um, she kept going to work even though she like resigned. Yeah. So up until the point where she actually her resignation was in effect, she actually quit before that point. Mm -hmm. So you know everybody's story is different, mm -hmm. and uh, that is one of the success stories that I followed. Mm -hmm. That I personally gave me some insight into how does online um, e-commerce work? Can it work for me like it works for her? Yeah. So it's. It's something that I definitely did look into, and it's nice when you 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 follow people who have had success stories. You can follow somebody who know how to well, yeah. and oh, you know, must start my own business that day. You have a story to tell. You don't have a story to tell. You don't start a business that day, and because somewhere everybody do, you are jumping into too. Nah, you 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 only follow people who are successful. That's the only way you get success. Alright, so what are some of the challenges you faced in starting your own business? Well, <laughs> a lot. Um, there is so much to tell. Uh, for example, my personal, you know, when my journey starting was difficult because you have to figure out what it is that you do. What is your service? What, is it? Yeah. what are you offering? What's your product? You know? That is something that you you have to satisfy first. Then the next problem is who are you who are you selling these things to? You know, who is your target audience? Who is your who is your customer base? Um, you know you worry about the specifics like registering the business and stuff a little later because those things those things were very important does not make you money that costs you money actually because it costs yeah. you money to register a business and then you have to pay tax on top of it yeah so starting was just that specific thing you know find out what is that i'm going to do how i'm going to do it um how the how was really also another thing because i am a full believer in digital media yeah. and e-commerce online banking online everything yeah. right i don't i don't um disagree or remove physical interaction or physical commerce but we're in a especially now with covid we're gonna have to be going in that direction soon mm -hmm. so it's best to be or to know about it sooner than later yeah right um going into a space where nobody even thinks it's important just yet and then when you realize that you can't spend the money, the physical money that you have in your hand anymore. And you're like, oh, where am I going to get this? Oh yeah. wait, this guy was doing it from long ago. So yeah, that's 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 been my my journey in with that. Um that, that was the, the major problems. Just finding out who am I going to target, how am I going to do this? And then if I'm gonna go online I'm gonna need a website, how am I going to build a website? Um I'm not a, I'm a designer but I'm not a coder right mm -hmm. so i can code website from scratch i have basic coding knowledge very basic i can recode to fix something yeah. but i cannot write it to say all right i'm going to build this from scratch mm -hmm. so i had to do more research to find out how i can build a website visually which led me to wordpress and all that they know how to integrate this and integrate that and those things are free <laughs> so it's it's expensive yeah so your startup cost is the next thing I had to be funneling money from what I earned at my 9 to 5 to funnel my dreams, to, to, to fund my dreams and fund my business and say, all right, I'm going to build this website, I'm going to build this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. But, you know, but in the technical side of things, if something goes wrong with the website, oh, what am I going to do? I don't know who to call because yeah. I need a code to fix it. So, yeah, those are some of the issues I ran into. Okay. Is there anything that you could have incorporated in your planning stage? Right to help you with the transition of moving from being employed to self-employed. Oh, well, um, funny enough, I think I did too much planning. Okay. Um, there is I follow this this 3D motion graphic, this motion artist called Grayscale Gorilla. Yeah. Um, he often talks about you know diving in and doing the thing because mm -hmm. you know. I, I went into 3D motion, 3D modeling, modeling. and I followed him to you know see how it's done and stuff. So he'd be like, here's a challenge here, here's a challenge there. So the best way to learn is to just go and do the thing. Yeah. Um, I've also read in a lot of books, especially like the Go Giver, 
um, business of the 21st century. It's a good book. Yes, by Robert Kiyosaki. You, you can't do anything if you don't actually start. Yeah. So, I think what led to me being taking so long to be to even go in that direction yeah. is apart from just being a little afraid of failure, mm-hmm. but I overthought a lot of things and maybe planned a little bit too much. So I planned, said, I'm going to do this. I'm gonna, this is what I'm gonna do. This is how I'm gonna do it. Da 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 da. da. Then I go to bed, dream about it, wake up tomorrow morning, go back to my nine to five, and said, all right, this is da 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 da. And I did that for like eight years, you know. So I did that for however long. So you keep planning, you keep planning, and then when you actually start to do the thing, you forget everything. Yeah. Or, or even the plans are not outdated because you started planning from way back when. So you know, cause like you know policies and stuff change, especially when registering a business, whatever. So, funny enough, I did plan too much. Um, I wish maybe I would have gotten into it a little earlier, like actually started doing anything earlier because over the course of life, I would have failed and understood what I need to change and maybe I've been much further in my progress, you know, um, today. So, if it is that you find that you're, you're 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 a planner and you keep planning and you never do anything, mm-hmm. stop. I just do something. Do something, mm-hmm. and as it continues, work work around it. Right. Who is your greatest inspiration? Ah, greatest inspiration. I have many inspirations, but um, I have many. I have, I have a lot. I have a lot of persons that inspire me as well. Um, but I, if I, I want to keep it. Just local, but just keep it strictly local. It would, I, it would be Adam Stewart. Yeah. Um, I followed him from 2011, which is close to the time where he actually took over Sandals and ATL and everything. He created basically ATL Automotive, what we know today. He revolutionized everything. And what I like about him mostly is that he put design first. Um, a lot of persons don't agree with that way of our method of doing business but you realize because they put design first it creates an atmosphere for people to uh, agree or even you know understand what it is they offer yeah so when you go to atl you go to the showroom to just say expensive because that's how they designed it yeah. and the cars that are being designed are not some little fruit and loops cars mm-hmm. you know they look nice and everything and then they have a price tag mm-hmm. that shows you the value of what yeah. it is that you're getting. Yeah. So um, for me, he, he it's not so much that he does inspiring things necessarily, yeah. but the fact that he's young in corporate Jamaica doing what he's doing, yeah. it motivates me to say, boy, yeah, I can try and do this thing too. Because a lot of them are just older persons who are doing conventional things and so on and so forth. But he's like a new breed, young blood coming into the thing and turning into his head. All right, so what do you do to keep yourself motivated? Um, I read, I do, I work, I do. I just do stuff. I, I think I'm, I, I mostly read and watch. Um, if I don't understand something, I go and look it up. Mm-hmm. And, and I'll just browse the web sometimes, browse my, my go-to content for design and all that's cool and hip. And I'll find some new stuff and I'll be like, hey, it's cool. Right? So even the other day, uh, virtual tours are not new, but I came across the virtual tour, which was supposed to be, which I will, I used as a product now for one of my, my clients, and it has helped their business tremendously, right? So the virtual tour gives you the ability to go into a space, 360 view, everything without physically being there, and with that, you can do you can actually pay for your product online mm-hmm. through that thing without leaving it. You can have a Zoom, not a Zoom call, but a video conferencing call with any with one of the, the persons who are working at a company to say, for example, real estate. If you are looking at a place and you want to know about this and you know about that, you can actually video conference them in to the actual virtual tour yeah. without being there physically. Right. And that's not something a lot of um, other tours or other things can do. So, because of my going out there and looking what's, what's, what's happening in the space and what's new and whatever, it helped me to incorporate that and put that into my own business offering. So 
So now that's what I do for automotive dealers who have been hit the heaviest by COVID and they come to me for that virtual tour 360 integration into their website it can be standalone they they have all the perks all all the interactivity perks yeah. buying things online viewing the product online 360 degree of the the, the car you can go into it see what's going on so all of that even the, the success of that even motivates me to do more and just to be able to serve somebody and say boy that's awesome because when i showed the client they were like we want it for everything now we want it for everything and that that, that motivates me to do more right all right all right so if there was anything that you could do different what would it be start earlier right. start earlier um Wow. They, they, what really kept me from doing this was not so much lack of knowledge it was lack of knowledge but not so much that it was really fail, fear 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 of failing and so so would you say failure is the greatest fear i would say that failure is my greatest fear but i think it's also one of the things that i use to turn it into a strength because i am very competitive I'm a very competitive individual, but I try not to let people know, yeah. you know, unless we play FIFA or something and I'm losing like horribly, <laughs> then you know. But um, I always have this innate feeling of being the best at whatever it is I do. I don't know why. If I play basketball and I know I'm not a basketballer, yeah. if I'm playing basketball, I want to be the best basketballer ever. Okay. And I don't, I don't have that interest in basketball like that. I watch it and right. I follow it. But I'm not, it's not like football. I love football. I want to be the best football ever. But when I play basketball, I want to be the best basketball ever. Okay. If I play baseball, which I don't play at all, I don't love the game, I want to be the best baseball player. Mm-hmm. So that's that's just me. I don't want to, anything I'm doing, I don't want to feel as if I'm failing at it or feel like I suck. But at the same time, that's necessary because that's the only way you grow and that's the only way you build. Right. So if you are, if, if nothing ever goes wrong for you, then you will learn and you will improve. Yeah. Case in point, IBM. We won't get into that, but you know, that's the reason why IBM is not where Apple is today. Yeah. Because they thought that they never made any mistakes and they were in a competitive position mm-hmm. until boom, Apple made whole heap of mistakes yeah. and now they are the most valuable company in the world. Right. So what would you say is your definition of success? My definition would be hmm, your association. Mm-hmm. Well, read, associate, duplicate. Those, right. those are those three things. Read and open your mind. Explore. Increase your knowledge. Mm-hmm. You don't know everything. You'll never know everything. The, the, the most successful persons are the ones that don't know something and yeah. try so hard to understand it and uh, or at least learn it. And, and, and know how to man, maneuver it. When they maneuver, when they've gotten that knowledge now, then they associate with people who are successful in that area. Yeah. And through that association, they build relationships or they even learn from them more stuff, like practical skills on how to apply that to the thing that they just read. Then the last thing now is to duplicate. Duplicate means if you're good at something and you want to build something else, you need another one of you yeah you can't build a car by yourself you can't well you can but it will take a very long time and it would probably stress you out right Right? you can probably build anything by yourself Mm -hmm. but it's not wise right you can't be successful that way maybe burn out at some point so the only way to become successful really especially if you're going to run a business is to have more of you duplicate yourself yeah. So when you learn and you've associated, now you try and pass let it pass it on to somebody else with, to, to develop that same skill. Mm-hmm. So they that can, they can do that. So some of the things that you used to do, you don't have to do that again mm-hmm. because you have somebody who is competent in the area mm-hmm. to do that, right? So for me, that's the the, the, la- the latter part of that is what I'm really working on to duplicate because that's how you improve sales, that's how you improve your business, that's how you grow your business. Right. You yourself can grow your business. So you can only take it to a certain point by yourself and then after that. Alright everyone, so if, if 
If you were to give advice to anyone who wants to be a success in life, what would it be? Get dirty. Um, get dirty means go out and do it. That's the only way we learn. You, you can only plan so far, you can only plan up to a, a, a particular stage, yeah. but then you're going to get to a point where you're going to actually have to do the thing to make it happen, to make it work, mm -hmm. right? So, but before you do that, you can, and I think you should, do a lot of reading. Read, expand your mind, um, ingest positivity, ingest things that are related to what you're interested in mm -hmm. and to what you want to build your business about, right. and then associate with people who are like-minded. So, I have a friend who tells me that you can't, I can't take advice from somebody who's broke if I want to be rich. Mm -hmm. So if I have a friend and the two are in the same financial situation, mm -hmm. but I'm going to tell you, say, you should have done this with your money or do that with your money, but in broke, yeah. that don't make no sense. Yeah. You can only tell, or you can only, I would only take advice yeah. from somebody who has a lot of money and it's keeping that money and it's duplicating that money and flipping it over and making it go. So associate with people who you want to be like. Don't associate with people who are not going in the same direction that you are. So not to say dash your friend them, but if you're if you're looking for a long-term business goal, if you're looking to be successful just generally in your life, you're gonna have to peel away things that are gonna take away your time and move you from your goal yeah. so the, the last bit of thing I would say is that um, apart from just reading you take knowledge and you apply it where it's applicable so for example this book would I re which I recommend reading as well by Simon Sinek it's called start with why it's a really good book and but that's not the one I'm thinking about actually it's the one with sell like crazy by Sabri Subi, he's an Australian entrepreneur and he has a company called Kinkam in Australia and he has this one point that I always think about is that if you're, if whatever you're doing does not move the money needle yeah. then it's not important so you realize while starting your business you will have a lot of things that you need to do a lot of things that you will have to do by yourself or you just have to take care of but sales is what drives and improves and grows businesses. Mm -hmm. So if you're focusing on, say, you're, say you're, it's photography. Mm -hmm. If you're focusing on getting the best camera, and uh, yes, but I can't be if it if it not have a Nikon or a Canon or whatever. If that Canon is not getting you money, yeah. or if you're not booking any more money or any more jobs because of the Canon or the nice camera that you have, then it don't make any sense. Mm -hmm. If you realize you're booking more jobs mm -hmm. than you can take or you know your camera can manage it then that's what you need to focus on booking mm -hmm. so booking is what will get you money but focusing on the right equipment is not going to necessarily get you money it's going to cause you to spend more money yeah. so focusing on what actually moves the needle of income and revenue in the business is what is really the most important piece everything can come around it after because you can design a way in which that will help you to get what you need to fulfill that that, that thing right well said all right so final question who would you challenge to be on this show i would challenge the great courtney chen to be on this show courtney chen you have been challenged all right come on thanks for coming today thanks for having me man all right, no problem. This is a good guy. He's he's success. <laughs> Talk to him. Success All right. diet. All right, guys. Thanks for watching another amazing episode of Success Diet. Don't forget to subscribe and share this channel with your friends. Peace.